Okay, so we all know basically what the inequality is and how it works and how you can do some stuff with it. But a lot of times, we're not going to just solve a particular question and get one answer, like x equals 3. A lot of times, we're going to get a whole bunch of answers. There's going to be a range of possibilities for something when we're solving a really complicated kind of problem. So I wanted to quickly remind you of how to express those different solutions in different ways. So the first way is just to sort of show you sort of a whole bunch of solutions right in a row. And I could write it the following way using an inequality. I could say, for example, that x is something that's between minus 3 and 2. Now, what this notation means is that x is going to be a value that's going to live between negative 3. It won't be any smaller than negative 3. And it's not going to exceed 2. So it's somewhere in between negative 3 and 2. Now, you'll notice that I use different symbols here. And there's a reason for that. You see, what this means is that x is not allowed to be negative 3. That is off limits. You can be as close to negative 3 as you want as long as you're always just a hair bigger. Okay? But you can't be negative 3. But with this symbol here, this means that x is allowed to migrate all the way up to 2. You can be as big as 2, but you can't be any bigger. So a lot of times we use these signs in various different ways. So for example, I could have the less than or equal to on this side and a strictly less than here and so forth. So this is what that means, but there's a way of thinking about that graphically. And let me show you that because that's actually going to be pretty powerful for a lot of the things we're going to look at. So if we think of like a number line and think of these as all the x values, then where does this live? Where are the possible x's that we're allowed to look at for some reason? Well, we look at where negative 3 is. Now I can, by the way, put all the marks and all the numbers down, but I don't have time to do that because there are a lot of them. But let's just put down the ones that we're interested in. So here, for example, I'll put negative 3 way over here. Now, of course, then there's negative 2, and there's negative 1, and there's 0, and then there's 1, and there's 2. I'm not going to bore you with all those details, even though I just did. <laughs> you see why I snuck that in? OK, but instead, I'll just put down the 2 here. OK, well, what we know is that this x, this mysterious value, we don't know what it is, it's going to live somewhere in between here and here. So the way I would denote that is by just sort of shading in all that stuff, or marking in, if you're using a marker. <laughs> Works either way. OK, so that indicates sort of the, the interval or the region where we're sort of looking at. But now we have to be really careful with these endpoints. Because see, this endpoint may or may not be allowable, and this endpoint may or may not be allowable. And the way we're going to actually denote that is by using either a parentheses, if I don't want to allow it, or a bracket, if I do want to allow it. So for example, here, what I would do, in fact, I will change to a different color, just to make this a more colorful lecture. <laughs> All right, so negative 3 is not permitted here because the x has to be strictly bigger than negative 3. So I'm going to put a parenthesis here, like that, to indicate that you can go as close as you want to negative 3, but you aren't allowed to touch it. No touching negative. Hey, hey, get away from negative 3. Not allowed. OK, good. However, 2, feel free to dip into 2 as much as you'd like. So to denote that, what I'm going to do is put a bracket to indicate that, in fact, that value is allowed. You can go all the way up to there. So in fact, this is a way of denoting that. Now, some people actually like to use little circles. In fact, let me just show you how that would look if we were just to use little circles. Because maybe this is the way uh, you're used to seeing it, or maybe you know people that talk to you about math that actually do it this way. And I want you to see both ways, because they're both the same. It's just a different way of, of doing it. You still put that thing in the center, that shading region, or coloring. But now what you do is you use a circle. And you put an open circle if you don't want to include the point. And you put in a filled in circle, like this, if you want to include the point. So these two things are actually saying the exact same thing. These are all the points that are in between minus 3 and 2, excluding minus 3, but including 2. And this says the same thing. I'm going to actually adopt this notation. You'll see why in two seconds. But um, if you're using this notation, then you would just want to sort of reconfigure. That's no problem. OK, well, why do I like this notation? And why do I think this is the way every single human being on this planet should be writing this when they do? And you know you're going to write this all the time in your life. The reason is because there's actually a shorthand way of writing this. You know, after a while, you may get tired of writing minus 3 and then the less than and the x. And the, I mean, you know, life is too short. You've got places to go and things to do. So there's actually a really shorthand way of addressing this. And it's actually called interval notation. See? Interval notation. Now, what does that mean? It means I'm just going to tell you the interval that you live in. And that's all. Instead of writing all this stuff out, what I'm going to do is write it as follows. I'm going to write the left-hand endpoint, and I'm going to write the right-hand endpoint. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the appropriate bracket. So you see, I just would copy this. I would put in this. So this interval is the exact same thing as this. This says all the points that are between minus 3 and 2, but we exclude minus 3, but we include 2. So this is what we call interval notation. And it's a very shorthand way, a very concise way, of expressing this whole thing like this. So let me do some other examples just to make sure that we can sort of talk this language. This is just a language thing now. It's nothing new. In fact, you can see that this interval notation is so powerful, it may even leave a residue. So you better be careful when you're doing this at home to make sure that you start with the same site. Now, here we go. So let me now show you another one. Let's take a look at the following. Suppose, for example, that I take a look at all the x's that are between 1 and 10, and I'm, I'm including both of the endpoints. How would I write that in interval notation? Well, let me show you one way of thinking about it. It's just to draw the number line put on 1, put on 10, and then think what you want. You want all the points in between here. And now I want to include that point. So I put actually a bracket here, and I put a bracket here because I want to include the 10. So how would I write that? I'd write that as bracket 1, 10 bracket. That's all the points between 1 and 10, including both of the endpoints. You see that? So, so that's pretty straightforward. Let me try another one here. How about uh, minus 3 less than x, less than 0. How would that look? Well, you could draw the number line again. Notice you put parentheses in both cases. Or you could just now start jumping right to the interval notation and put down negative 3, comma, 0, and then say, now, do I want to include negative 3? Do I or not? Shake your head right now. Shake your head right now. I saw you. No. So we put a parentheses. And then do we want to include 0? No. So we put another parentheses. And so this would be the interval notation for this. Now, a lot of times, we just, don't have, we just don't have these two things, but we only have one thing. For example, suppose I just say that x is some number that's bigger than or equal to 5. Well, how would I write that? You see this missing part of it, right? You're saying, where's the rest of it? I want some more. OK, well, I'm glad you want more math. But in fact, we can express this too. And a good way of seeing this is just to draw the picture. Let's draw the picture of this one. So I put in 5, and these are all the x's, remember, that are greater than or equal to 5. So that's all of this land right here. This land is your land right here. And it keeps going, right? It never stops. And I'm allowed to include 5, so I'll put the bracket like that. So that's the interval. So you see, it starts at 5, but where does it end? Well, folks, it doesn't end. It doesn't end. So we put infinity or plus infinity. And now, how should we put the brackets? Well, we're going to put a bracket like this because we include 5. But folks, infinity is not a number. So we never would put a bracket there. We always put a parentheses because infinity is just a symbol. It's not a number. It's a symbol. So we want to go all the way out to infinity, and that's the way we denote that. Let's try just a couple more quick examples. Suppose I want to run off the other direction. Suppose I want to go off to negative infinity. Well, so suppose I said that, in fact, x is some number less than negative 1. Well, how would that look? Well, let's say, yeah, less than negative 1. How would that look? Well, here's negative 1. And I want all the points that are less than it, so all the points to the left of negative 1. So what I would do here is look at all these points all the way out. You've got more land than you know what to do with. Plenty of room for expansion. And I do not want to include negative 1 now. So I put a parentheses like this. So I go from now negative infinity up to negative 1. And I never include infinity. And in this case, I don't want to include negative 1. So it would be all the points in between. So that's how you would represent something like this in interval notation. Here's a little pop quiz for you. What do you think this represents? What values? What do you think? In fact, I'll give you a chance right now to make a guess. So take a guess and see if you can figure out what values that would represent. Try it right now. 